Sake Geeks. Dominic here, the Sake Geek. I say it all the time when I do tastings and events and talk to people about sake, try to get them interested in sake. It is a really great time to get into sake and to start drinking sake. And that is especially true in the United States. The reason for that is that craft sake brewing is really, really starting to take off in the United States. In fact, New York City itself now has two sake breweries, the first of which is Brooklyn Kura. Brooklyn Kura was started by two gentlemen in 2018, Brian Poland and Brandon Doan. They actually met in Japan and were exposed to sake in a new way while they were there. And really, um, the reason for starting their brewery is they wanted to recreate that experience of encountering sake like you would in Japan, uh, particularly namazake, uh, locally produced sake. They wanted to recreate that experience uh, for Americans. Now, it might seem like a strange choice, but when you think about it, New York City has so many Japanese restaurants and very sophisticated uh, drinkers, for certain. And also, New York City water is famous. A lot of people say the reason that pizza and bagels are so uniquely delicious in New York has something to do with the water. Um, there's debate about that. But I grew up in New York and the water is good. Um, New York City's water supply comes from up north uh, in a mountainous region called the Catskills. And there are a bunch of reservoirs up there. Um, and so the water for New York City is kind of soft water. Um, it's mostly from rainfall and from snowmelt. And so I'm expecting uh, this sake from Brooklyn Cora to kind of have that soft water uh, feel to it. I did a little research on the brewery and listened to some podcasts where um, Brandon and Brian were interviewed. And really what these guys were all about is making sake accessible, demystifying sake and building on the history of brewing that Japan has begun, but at the same time leaving their own mark and overall to create sake that is subtle and complex and would not be out of place on a wine menu at a restaurant in New York City. They actually make seven or eight different kinds of sake, and what's really interesting is that they are embracing the variety of sake rice that is now available in the United States. As someone who has homebrewed sake for a while in this country and abroad, uh, there wasn't a lot of options for brewing rice. But now in the last few years, Arkansas has started to make uh, sake rice. California is now growing sake rice, and so they actually brew sake with uh, Yamada Nishiki and Omachi, two rice varieties that um, have a long history in Japan but are now being grown here in the United States. This sake called Blue Door is a Junmai sake. It is unpasteurized, it's a namazake, and interestingly the milling rate for the rice is on the label is 50 to 70 percent. Their label is very um, simple, very elegant. There's no temperature suggestion, but being a Junmai sake, 17% alcohol, I'm not going to be serving it too cold. Probably take it out of the fridge and let it sit and come almost to room temperature. And I might try to heat it up too. But let's open the bottle and give it a try. So this is pouring very, very clear. Um, there's a very slight kind of straw color to this, um, but it looks like this is a, a pretty well filtered. This is very interesting. There is like a contrast here of the kind of uh, almost zesty zing the freshness of uh, namazake but also a little bit of earthiness on the nose too there is something almost like musky in there maybe like musk melon or something because there is a little sweetness too and then there is a little bit of alcohol in the background too at, at 17 percent feel like that's not so out of place and the more i swirl it around a bit of earthiness too almost a slight funk Maybe from the fact that this is an unpasteurized sake. Let's give it a taste. Kanpai. Okay, so there's that kind of zippy, zesty, nama note. And there's also a very slight sweetness as well. It's very soft on the palate, and there is some heaviness to it. There's some weight, and it really gets to the mid and back palate. There's a lot of depth of flavor there, and a, a hint of spiciness, almost like a black pepper. And on the finish is where you really start to see the dry, side of this sake. There's a bit of a lingering finish to it that really makes me want to have something to eat. I think this is a very food-friendly sake.
mm, a lot of presence to this sake. There, it really does kind of linger on the palate in a in a good way. Um, at, at the back of the palate, there's umami there in spades. Very good depth of flavor. Uh, for a Junmai sake, I, I think this ticks all the boxes. At this temperature, which is slightly cool, the sake does seem to be like kind of like tight. What I'm going to do is I'm going to warm it up. So very slightly warm, maybe 30, 35 degrees Celsius. Now it's starting to smell like a namazake. I'm getting the kind of, the kind of sour, earthy, kind of funky aroma and a good deal more sweetness as well. Kind of a transformation in, in a good way. It, it tasted really good before, very straightforward. A little bit warmer temperature seems to reveal a little more complexity. If you can drink uh, sake at a few different temperatures and evoke something different at each temperature, to me that makes a really interesting sake. As far as food pairings, I would say hearty food with this hearty sake. Yakitori, barbecue, any kind of grilled meats. Pizza would be amazing with this. Charcuterie, cured meats also I think would be really, really great with this sake. So very soon I hope to uh, make it back down to Brooklyn to pick up some more sake from Brooklyn Kura. I think they've made a really good sake, a sake that is uh, interesting and has a lot of depth um, and is a very versatile sake and certainly a food friendly sake. Uh, it is unpasteurized, but it's not like an overwhelming namazake kind of flavor where all you get is that kind of wild, brash nama quality. It is also very settled and has a good deal of depth to it. Now that I'm back in New York, I hope to do a lot more videos like this uh, showcasing sake from American craft sake brewers. I know a lot of my friends in Taiwan and in Japan and other places are really curious about what American craft sake brewers are doing. And I think Brooklyn Kura so far are doing a, a, a really good job. Can't wait to try some more. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't done so already. I'm also on Instagram as the Sake Geek. So until next time, stay safe, stay healthy, and kanpai.